uh, be praying for obvious things. We want to be praying for people that are affected directly by the, the, the coronavirus. Um, uh, we also want to pray for those who are, uh, who are terrified by it. We just want to pray that God would really send a peace uh, to people that they wouldn't fret. Of course, we'll talk about precautions in just a moment before we get into our message. But be praying for people. We will pray in just a moment as well. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up too. So with that in mind, let me, uh, oh, and then our bowling outing today has obviously been canceled. We're going to reschedule that for another time. Uh, in spite of how antiseptic most bowling alleys generally are. So uh, we'll reschedule that later on after everything kind of blows by. And, and, and by the way, on that note, it will eventually blow by. At some point, like all of the things that have come before, uh, this, by the way, is not one of the judgments in Revelation. It doesn't fall in line time-wise with those things just yet. However, um, you know, that said, um, as the world gets used to things like this happening, it uh, probably explains a little bit about why when things start happening that people don't necessarily repent, but instead they just press on and they curse God and everything in the midst of all the things that are coming down during that period of time. But for us, uh, it's, I, I, you know, without knowing the future, my sense is like bird, uh, bird flu and all the various things that have come before, at some point we will be through this and we will be back onto our lives, maybe not as normal, we probably will see changes and stuff because of what we've experienced here, but we will eventually no longer be wondering about whether the coronavirus is going to infect us or not. So let me speak to that for just a moment on a practical level uh, and a spiritual level. First of all, um, on the spiritual level. Um, there is no conflict, scripturally speaking, and you will never find anyone in Scripture who wrestles with where faith and wisdom are in conflict, because they're not. Walking by faith and walking in wisdom are not mutually exclusive ideas. Contrary to a lot of the faith teachers out there and people who have frankly been misquoting a lot of Scripture in regard to the coronavirus and this kind of a thing, uh, we want to make sure that we don't assume that believers can't get coronavirus, and if they do, they don't have enough faith. Okay? That is a stupid idea. Okay? It's not a scriptural idea, it's a stupid idea. And anybody who's teaching that believers are exempt from the possibility of getting it is misleading you. Okay? In other words, it is not unwise to take regular precautions, right? Uh, walking in wisdom, you know, when, as believers, we should be exampling what it means to walk by faith. Should we also not be exampling what it means to walk in wisdom? Is wisdom somehow not from God? Of course it is. It's from God every bit as much as the faith that he gives us to trust him is. And so we want to make sure that we balance those two things. I am not afraid of getting coronavirus, okay? That doesn't mean I won't get it. And so I wash my hands a lot. I, I put the sanitizer on, you know, um, and that kind of a thing. And then you just, we ought to take the normal precautions that we're going, that we should take during this time. Um, that said, we should not be afraid if God opens an opportunity for any one of us to, to minister to somebody or to speak truth to somebody or to help somebody who's in need, my view is that we shouldn't resist those opportunities out of fear. Okay? Chances are a lot of people are going to continue to get the coronavirus. Thankfully, present company, I, I recognize, thankfully, there tend to be pockets of, 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 of more susceptible people than the general middle-aged population. Uh, however, that said, as, as you've no doubt read, there's lots of news on this. I'm not going to reiterate things you've probably heard a thousand times. I'll just simply say it once. If you are a senior saint here today, we obviously have a, for, for, the, for the pretty good mix of age groups we have in our little church, we have a pretty significant senior group. If you are over 60 years old, you should be mindful of the fact that you are more susceptible than somebody who's 24. Okay, you should take extra precautions to wash up, take the sanitizer, be careful about shaking hands, things like that, normal precautions. If you're middle-aged or younger, you're less likely than someone who is maybe a, a somewhat compromised resistance or immunity, uh, immune system in that. But that said, even if you're middle-aged, which I consider myself, at 52 coming up on, I consider myself middle-aged, assuming I live to be 104. But, uh, you know, I'm about the middle-aged category. It doesn't mean I'm not susceptible, but it means I'm less so than someone who's 65 or older or something. So just be mindful. Yeah. 
Oh, I think 50 is the new 30. Don't, you don't have to, yeah. Uh, and and I, while on the one hand, you're not really as old as you feel. Senior. Senior, senior. Uh, no one's called me senior yet, but I know the day is coming. I'm closer to that now than, than I used to be. So, we, but point being, take normal precautions. On that note, there's hand sanitizer in the corner here. There's hand sanitizer in the blue room on the way in and out of the main doors that we use. Uh, all of the bathrooms have the Gojo soaps and everything, so you can wash up a lot. Um, right now, we have no other kids' ministries going on at the moment that I, I don't think, right? No one's... I think we're all in here right now. Andrew. Is Andrea over there? Okay, Andrea's there. So if you are in ministry where you are serving children or you're serving food and that kind of thing, take extra precautions to wash up. We've got individually wrapped, wrapped snacks and stuff out there. Just, you know, a lot of, this, of that is for peace of mind. It's just wise to do those kinds of things, and it doesn't change a lot. Newsflash, you should be washing your hands anyway. Right? Uh, someone, <laughs> someone posted this week, if you're going through 100 rolls of toilet paper in a week, you probably needed to see a doctor long before COVID-19 <laughs> came along. So, yeah, so, you know. Now, on that note, too, on a practical note, um, don't be a hoarder. Don't be a hoarder. There's a lot of people that need things out there. Take what you think you'll need for a week or two or three, but don't, don't be like these people that's wiping out every bit of, as soon as Walmart gets toilet paper. Don't get 80 packs of toilet paper. Get a couple. Get what you need for a couple of weeks because there are people out there who desperately do need it. So be thoughtful about it. That's one way that you can serve people is by taking what you need and not more. Okay, we don't know exactly what we need, but be thinking in that way. Even, even now, and as we are concerned about just making sure we don't pick up a virus, be thoughtful about the fact that as you're washing your hands, we're also invited by Jesus himself to wash feet. And so let's kind of combine those two ideas. Um, now, in terms of our service here on Sunday mornings, as you can see, we're a little less than full capacity. Uh, so that said, uh, a lot of your larger churches are following the advice uh, that has been handed down that meetings of 250 and more, and more should consider not meeting for this, just for the sake of being in close proximity and those kinds of things uh, and the possibility of transmitting uh, that virus. Now, Williamson County, I think, has what, eight or 11 cases, I think, eight? something. So, you know, we're in an area that cases have been found, right? So we want to be thoughtful about that. Um, larger churches are not gathering today, but they're doing live streams uh, because they don't want to up the risk of people uh, contracting it. And the reason why the government is, uh, you know, setting aside any conspiracy theories, one practical reason why there is a call to minimize large gatherings is because if, if, we can, if, if they can keep it down to a somewhat manageable uh, amount of cases that happen, they won't run out of resources quickly. But we'll be able to spread it out over time and hopefully during that time replenish resources that are needed so that there's not a huge spike. That actually is what happened in Italy. They didn't do really anything, and all of a sudden now there's, they just don't have enough to deal with the problem. So the, the idea is that, we're, is that the government's trying to make sure they can regulate that enough. Now, you can let your mind run wild as to whether they're trying to kill off half the population or whatever it is. But I'm not into that. But the idea being, though, that from our perspective, it is wise to be thoughtful about the fact that lots of resources are going to be needed over the next little while. Take what you need. Don't overdo it so that you can allow other people an opportunity to have their resources, too. So getting back to our services. Um, we met this morning. In part, um, uh, I've, I've been in contact with the other Calvaries and stuff. They're all meeting as well. Uh, Jerry up in Rivergate has got uh, uh, Long Hollow Pike. He's got a congregation of a couple hundred people and all that. They're meeting this morning. Um, however, we are all playing it by ear. You know, uh, if, if in fact, as is expected, uh, the number of people that contract COVID-19 increases, uh, especially in our area, we will change the way we're going to do service. Oh. Holy cow. While that's, uh, while that's going on. So I know I'm totally not prepared to say that kind of thing. I don't want to do that. But you can see, obviously, people in our congregation are feeling better about the idea of maybe not being in a group of people for fear of contracting it. And I, I don't diminish uh, the, the feeling on that. 
Um, so that being said, if it looks like there are a few more cases that crop up, if it looks like it's beginning to, as more people are tested and we find out the numbers are actually higher than they are, we may make the decision not to meet on Sunday morning but do a live stream like we do currently, but we would do it on, you know, like uh, on, on our YouTube channel or something like that. I'll figure out a way that's actually easy to do. It'll either be on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, but we'll send that information out so that everybody can watch from home. I'll pull out a guitar. We'll do a couple of worship songs songs together and then we'll do our our time so um, I, again I don't expect that to last for a long time but out of uh, out of respect for for the fact that maybe some of you all sitting here were really questioning whether or not to come this morning that's totally okay okay no one thinks less no one should think less of you for feeling that way uh, if things get worse over the course of this coming week or if you start feeling sick and, and that kind of thing we may see even this number shrink and so uh, it may be that I touch base and sort of an, sort of reach out and ask you all to respond to me individually not in a group setting so you don't feel pressured in one way or the other to let me know if you're thinking about maybe not coming coming. And if it looks like we have a very small number of people, we may just decide to do a live stream just to save the trouble of everybody setting up and doing all that kind of stuff. Logistically, it would just be easier in that situation. So we will see how that goes, okay? Um, but we will be in contact about that during the course of the week. Okay. Everybody got the email, I hope, where we included the information Perry said about both some of the issues about the, uh, about the virus as well as some general precautions that we should all be taking. Uh, barring what's in that email that you can read for yourself, are there any questions outside of that regarding COVID-19 that you'd like to ask about in relation to our church and that? No, just a quick footnote of supporting what you're getting at. Um, so two quick points. Um, I'm mindful of the scripture in Ecclesiastes 7 where the writer uh, talks about avoiding all extremes. Um, and yeah. The fears God will avoid all extremes. Yeah. And, in the context of wisdom. So I think that's a good word. And I know yeah. the news that Israel decided to uh, close restaurants for, uh, I forget if it was 24 hours or a week. Yeah. But their idea was to just keep people so, yeah. 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 I respect it, but I personally I'm more concerned about people I pass on the I 24 loop at 3 30 on Fridays. I'm, not, I'm actually not working. Yeah. Much. I, when it comes to nervousness or fear, I feel more edginess about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and each of us have our context we're living in, and we have to be thoughtful about how we approach that, you know. Um, oh, you mentioned the word support. You know we don't, we're not about money in this church per se, but if you are interested in giving, and but you're a little nervous about the box, you're not going to be coming for a while because of what's going on, we do have a PayPal option on our, our homepage, on our website, and I think on our YouTube channel as well. So if you'd like to still continue to give but just aren't available to put it in the box, you can use that means to do that. But just a quick note about that. Our, sadly, our expenses won't change too much during the course of that unless we don't meet for a number of weeks and we can maybe not pay rent for those weeks, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, because they closed them all. Right, so yeah. Like everything else, and then the hospital was built. I forgot how many thousands of people. Yeah. But they, they somehow flattened it out. Well, and hopefully it's for the right reasons, the right things have happened. So, yeah. Yeah, Jack. This is an FYI, because, you know, Vicki and I are pretty involved in this. There was an emergency cabinet meeting on Friday. Oh, well, praise the Lord. He called me, actually, and asked what I was going to talk about today. No. <laughs> So it's an encouragement. 
Yeah. To have a believing government, a governor who would sit right there with you and say, I'm in total agreement. Yeah. Well, and, and on that note to dovetail, you should be thankful you live in Tennessee where people are just totally quick to, to stand up and help others around them, whether it was the tornado or whether it's this kind of a thing. You're very fortunate to live in a state like this because there's a lot of folks that truly is aptly named as the volunteer state. There's a lot of folks that are very concerned and caring about those around them, and we should certainly be among that number. So um, be wise, be cautious. Those things are not in conflict. Walk by faith, but also walk in wisdom as well. So All right. Well, uh, yeah, Leo. I can't find the article, but I started to read it. And that uh, doctor who's the head of uh, infectious diseases. Uh, yeah, the Foshi or. The uh, possibility of a closed down or a shutdown is not out. Yeah, sure, that could be, right. I just, again, we need to walk in wisdom. And I think one of the things that would precipitate a mass shutdown of everything is people panicking and going crazy buying everything, and now we have not enough resources. So I think if enough people, again, walk with a certain sense of walking in wisdom, doing the right things, you know, you're going to be less likely. Uh, well, I forget, I've t always misquoted this old Chinese proverb, but the idea of sometimes in an effort to avoid the thing, you actually do the thing that brings you to it, you know? So you want to be thoughtful about these things and not make the mistake of, of, of creating uh, more of a problem. So, okay, well, that said, I was uh, fully planning on still opening the Word today. So if you would, open your Bibles with me to John chapter 8.